Hi, I'm Isabel, and I'm one of the co-founders of Arinto. I brought a little riddle for you today. What does this chair, this cinnamon bun, and this car all have in common? You guessed it. They, or one of the raw materials to make them, were all once on a ship. 90% of goods worldwide are carried on a ship, and it's the backbone of global economy. But with this great effect on logistics also come great um, emissions. Because if shipping was a country, it would be the sixth biggest emitter, emitting even more than Germany and contributing around 3% to global greenhouse gas emissions. There's one really crucial inefficiency in shipping, which I want to present to you today. And it looks a little bit like this. OK, not exactly like this, um, but you get the point. Ships are rushing to ports in kind of like a race situation. So they go there very, very fast, only to arrive at a very congested port. And this is the case in so many of the sea passages that we see today. And it is an inefficiency that is known as hurry up and wait, or also sail fast, then wait. And this sail fast and wait inefficiency causes a lot of problems. To quantify it a little bit more, 10% of a ship's time is just spent waiting to get into the port. And what it means for the global um, shipping economy is that around 18 billion US dollars of fuel costs are wasted every year due to this inefficiency. And this translates to around 100 million tons of CO2, which could be emitted if this were to be improved. So how do we fix this? That's what we asked ourselves at Arinto. And a really good way to fix this is arrival optimization. So, for example, you can see a voyage here where you would go full speed for 17 days, you would arrive at the port and then wait for five days. Or what you could also do is you could know beforehand when you should arrive at the port to minimize waiting time, fuel usage and emissions, and uh, actually optimize the whole voyage. So I want to make it a bit clearer um, how that actually pans out and give you a very tangible example of such a voyage optimization. Um, so we can look at a Panamax bulker that is laden, so it has cargo on board and it's going from Brazil to Mozambique. And this was actually uh, just the example I showed you today. So if this ship was going at 13 knots, it would arrive on day 17. And if it would go 11 knots, it would arrive on day 20. Now, what does this mean for its consumption and its um, yeah, fuel cost? These are the savings that you could achieve with arrival optimization. Just an example, of course. So in this example, the ship could have saved more than 90 tons of fuel. It could have saved more than 64,000 US dollars in fuel costs. And it could have saved more than 280 tons of CO2 for only this one voyage. So how do we do this? At Arinto, we are utilizing a smart queue. So we are looking at all the ships that are heading to the same port and terminal. And we are also looking at and analyzing what is happening at the port now, but also at the moment that the ship will arrive. So predicting congestion and predicting the lineup of all the ships heading there. And by analyzing all this data and all these different factors, we determine the perfect time for the ship to arrive at the port without having any disadvantages, but only being able to save fuel and uh, optimize their voyage. So with this, actually, not only the shipping companies benefit, but also the other stakeholders. So, of course, it is very clear that ship owners can save massive amounts of fuel with this and emissions. They can operate more greener. Um, but also charterers, for example, so the cargo owners, can decrease their scope three emissions and their cost. 
and even the terminals and ports can increase their throughput if they organize the smart queue in a smart way and they can increase their productivity and um, remove waiting time in front of the port which also helps to uh, reduce port area emissions which are usually not very popular with people living there. So what is the whole market size? What are we looking at? So as mentioned before, we have around 18 billion in fuel costs that are wasted from sailing too fast and then waiting. And then what is new as well is that there are many different regulations in shipping that are heading towards the shipping companies and that they have to deal with. One example is the EU ETS, which will be um, rolled out to shipping uh, to all the ships, no matter where they're from and where, or where their company is based. If they're calling at an EU port, they have to get allowances for their CO2 that they emit. And this is approximately estimated to be $9 billion. And then you have additional um, reductions and savings uh, in costs. For example, you have a better supply chain visibility or another really um, concrete example is hull fouling, which is the nasty stuff that grows on your ship if you don't move it um, and makes you less efficient if you sail. So, and of course the last part is the collision risk, where if you have a lot of really big uh, ships very close to each other in front of the port and there's for example a storm, it is very risky uh, and the ships will be at higher risk to collision and actually receive damage from this. So all in all, we're looking at uh, more than 27 billion in savings from arrival optimization. And with that, I would say let's decarbonize shipping together. Thank you.